Hey everybody, Dwayne England, Team Potsky back here in the Bait Lab and today we're going to talk about curing frozen salmon roe. Now these eggs have been in the freezer for several months and they are uncured and frozen. Now a lot of people believe you cannot successfully cure uh, salmon eggs that have been previously frozen in the freezer for any length of time and not previously been cured. Um, the difficulty is most people allow them to thaw out and then they try to cure them. And when eggs thaw out in the natural air, they have a tendency to become very weak. The membrane and the skin around the eggs become weakened. And then when you cure them, you, uh, you lose a large percentage of, the egg, percentage of the eggs because they pop. And you're left with a skein of eggs that do not have very many actual egg berries left on them, and they do not fish very well. So the process that you need to use is a wet or liquid brine. And we have a recipe here uh, that's going to, uh, I'm going to show you today, it's going to work very well. It's a combination of some powdered products mixed in with our fire brine and basically putting this brick of uncured eggs uh, into the liquid brine for upwards of 18 to 24 hours to complete the curing process. And when it's all said and done and you strain them off, you're going to end up with some nice, very plump, uh, deep red salmon eggs that are going to fish very, very good. Uh, milk out tremendous scent and hold up well uh, when you fish them. So we're going to start the process. The first thing we're going to do is mix all our, our dry products. And it's a combination of salt and sugar, Braxel fire, some krill powder, and some sodium sulfite. Because I'm using a non-sulfite cure, I like to add in a certain percentage of sodium sulfite that I feel uh, does uh, complement the eggs very well. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, mix in a half cup of non-iodized sea salt and a half cup of sugar. Okay, so now we're going to mix the powdered ingredients that eventually will then dump into the liquid brine. So I'm gonna start with a half cup of non-iodized sea salt. Uh, the salt helps definitely tighten up and firm up the eggs a little bit. We're gonna add a half cup of sugar this is uh, a natural, more raw sugar. You can use white granulated sugar. I just happen to have the, uh, the natural raw sugar. I also want to use one half cup of Potsky's Baraxel Fire. I use the dark red. I'm going to make some really dark red eggs uh, through this process because I like fishing dark red eggs for fall salmon. So we we'll use a half cup of the Baraxel Fire and I'm going to use a quarter cup of sodium sulfite. Sodium sulfite has been proven to be a great bite stimulant, especially for Chinook. Also works on coho, but more so for Chinook. So, but you don't need a lot of it. Uh, too much sodium sulfite can actually burn your eggs and weaken the membrane. So you want to put just enough in. With this recipe here, we go with a quarter cup uh, sodium sulfite. And then the Potsky's uh, Firepower Krill Powder. Uh, this is a two and a half ounce bottle and this one just happens to be halfway uh, gone. So basically with this amount of products in here, I put in one ounce or one, almost one and a half ounces. It seems like a lot, but when you dump this into a gallon of water to make your liquid brine, uh, krill is a very good additive to put in most of your eggs that you're brining. So I like to put in at least a uh, half bottle or at least one ounce of, of the krill powder as, a, uh, as an additional bite stimulant. And then I'm simply going to mix all this up and we'll be adding this into our liquid uh, uh, portion of the brine next. Alright, now we got our container here that we're going to mix our actual wet brine uh, ingredients together. So now we're going to dump our fire brine in. Now, I want to make uh, eggs that are extremely dark red, like the ones that uh, are at the front of the table here. Um, I have natural fire brine, which obviously has no color, but I have a lot of red fire dye, and I have a couple bottles of red fire dye. Now, keep in mind, we are curing 10 pounds of eggs, okay? These eggs are all frozen together. You cannot separate them out. You can't try to cut them, uh, you know, cut a portion of those off and cure some and, and save some from later. You're committed on this. Whatever you put into this container and then you put that 10 pound block of eggs in, that is the color and the scent 
and the, the texture that those eggs will all turn out. So you got to decide what you want to use and just go for it. Now we're doing 10 pounds so I got to have enough liquid that uh, the eggs will basically be floating in the liquid and part of the thawing process of these eggs as they're curing in the liquid is what preserves them into and cures them into a very well textured, durable, uh, good color, all the good qualities you want in, a, in, a, in an egg skein that you're going to fish. This is what the liquid brine does. If you use one bottle of fire brine and try to do 10 pounds of eggs, you're going to be very disappointed. It's not enough liquid to encompass around the eggs to keep them all from bursting. So we're going to dump a couple bottles of red in to start it off. And if you don't have red, don't worry about it. Uh, again, we got uh, natural fire brine we're also going to use. And I can just add more uh, fire dye if I, if I don't feel like the color is going to be adequate enough. So here we have basically four bottles. These are 32 ounce bottles. So four bottles of fire brine is going to give you one gallon of liquid. And that should be more than enough. Okay, to do five to ten pounds of eggs is basically what this recipe is for. I have my fire dye here, extremely powerful in its color enhancement. And I typically do one to two ounces of fire dye per gallon of water. So I'm going to put in about a half a bottle, which is going to be two ounces, and that's really going to add a tremendous amount of color. Uh, that's basically it for the liquid portion of it. Now I have my in ingredients that I previously mixed. Again, it's the salt and the sugar, the uh, sodium sulfite, and the krill powder is all in here. And the baraxal fire, the red baraxal fire. We'll dump that in here. And now I'm going to take a little bit of time and stir this around. Okay? You got to make sure your ingredients are well mixed. And uh, the thing about a lot of recipes, if you're looking for liquid uh, brine recipes for curing eggs, you're going to see a lot of them are one quart of water, one cup of salt, one cup of sugar, maybe a cup of borax. Um, that's a lot of dry contents for a small amount of water. The one thing about using fire brine is you already have in the fire brine itself salts and sugars and bite stimulants that are put in there by Potsky. So, if I was to add several cups of salt and several cups of sugar into this gallon of water or a gallon of fire brine, I'm going to over salt and over sugar my eggs. So you got to keep in mind that you already have suspended salts and sugars in the fire brine. So that's why we're only using a half cup of each product uh, within this mixture. Um, because we don't want to make the eggs so firm and brittle that they simply are bursting. So again, half cup salt, half cup sugar, half cup of Braxo fire a quarter cup of sodium sulfite and at least one to one and a half ounces of the uh, krill powder. Okay. The other thing I like to add when I'm doing liquid brines is additional scent. And in this, in this batch here we are going to put in one can of tuna and the importance here is that it's tuna packed in oil. I like to have the tuna packed in oil. It puts a tremendous amount of scent on the eggs. Now I know oil and water doesn't mix, right? But in this particular environment, once you put the eggs in there, and after they begin to, begin to thaw out, and you stir them around a little bit, that oil actually kind of gets all over that egg skein and adds a tremendous amount of scent to it. The, the actual tuna meat breaks down into fine particles, and it truly adds a tremendous amount of additional scent to your eggs if you're brining these or curing these to fish for salmon later this season in the fall. Okay, uh, You can also do uh, other types of scents in your liquid brine. You can smash up or dice up a whole bunch of sand shrimp or ghost shrimp you can add into your mix. You can also take uh, herring or mackerel or uh, sardine and you can fillet those out and mince those up in small pizza pieces and mix all that into your liquid brine. Any of those fleshy fishy type uh, baits that you can put into this liquid brine are going to be an asset to your bait and it's going to change the scent uh, and probably work to your favor. So uh, this particular batch, I'm putting in one uh, full can of tuna in oil just to add the extra scent.
Okay, and again, I want to stir this around a little bit. Now it looks kind of like a mess. I got a lot of tuna floating on top here. Obviously it's suspended in the oil and oil is going to float on top. But don't worry about that. Um, stir it around, mix it up, kind of get it to break down a little bit. And you'll find that a lot of the salts and sugars are also suspended in the liquid. You shouldn't have a lot of it sitting on the bottom, okay? Um, and for the amount that you do, after the eggs get put in here, they start absorbing those salts and sugars. So those granules uh, eventually start disappearing because they're actually absorbed into your eggs, doing exactly what they're supposed to do. Toughen the eggs, make them a little more durable, uh, add, add a tremendous amount of color here with the dyes. And um, that's basically it. You have a liquid brine here now that you simply, uh, we will drop that whole 10 pound block of eggs in here and let it do its thing. Okay, basically now we have our liquid brine and all the contents mixed uh, very thoroughly and we're ready to drop our 10 pound block of frozen uncured eggs in there. And you, you look at these eggs and they've been frozen for quite a while. You know, we have a little bit of blood in here. Uh, typically when we're curing eggs, we like to take fresh eggs and get the blood out of the skein. Uh, you can't do that when they're frozen like this. And you cannot separate them, so don't try to do that. It's a solid block of ice, basically. Um, the, the nice thing about utilizing the liquid brine, believe it or not, some of this blood actually finds its uh, way out of the eggs. Don't ask me how it works, it just does. You're going to end up with eggs that have very little to no blood in them after they've been liquid brined. So if you get eggs, from whoever, whatever distributor, um, and they have some blood in them, don't panic. The liquid brine works magic on these eggs and makes them turn out really nice. So now we wanna make sure we get this gallon Ziploc bag off of these eggs and try not to destroy them. So we'll just open it up and I don't wanna let these sit here and thaw out to get them out of the bag. That would defeat the purpose of putting them in the liquid brine. So we're actually just gonna cut this plastic off of these eggs so that we can get them into the brine without too much thought. Just like that. Now we have our 10 pound block. And we're just going to set that in here. Try not to drop it and splash your brine everywhere. Now you notice it's kind of sitting in here and not completely covered. Don't worry about that. Uh, all you have to do, one thing we can do mm -hmm. if you think too much of it is sticking out of the liquid, we can add more uh, fire brine to it to make sure these are floating. Um, the other thing we do as they begin to thaw out I'll take this container and simply slosh it back and forth and make sure I get some liquid up on top of these eggs. Okay, uh, That begins to get them to thaw out a little bit as they sit. And I'll come out here and check on them about every half an hour or so as they begin to thaw and break apart. Now I'm going to leave them soaking in this liquid brine, like I said, for upwards of 18 to 24 hours, believe it or not. And because we haven't used a tremendous amount of salts and sugars, they're not going to get overly cured. They're not going to be extremely hard or rubbery when they're done. They're going to be a, a really good texture and very fishable. So we'll let these sit in the brine for upwards of 24 hours, and then we're going to take them out and strain them and complete the process. Hey guys, Dwayne England back here in the bait lab. Day two of our uh, liquid brine curing process of frozen eggs. So if we look here in our vet, the eggs have been soaking for about 18 hours now, and uh, for the most part, they're pretty much done. Uh, you can leave them in for 24, uh, up to 24 hours, and it's not going to hurt it. But these things have really good color, and but they've been soaking a lot of liquid. So the next thing we want to do is take our finished eggs and allow them to drain some of this excess liquid off. So we're just going to put these, I just pile them in a colander or a strainer, and... That, for the most part, allows a lot of the excess liquid to come out of there. I don't want to fill it up completely. I want to allow those to drain off for about 15 or 20 minutes. And then I will uh, put those into gallon Ziploc bags and either store them in my refrigerator 
uh, to be fished here in the near future or I will make sure I got all the air out of the bag and put them in the freezer and store them for a few months until I'm ready to fish. Alright guys, now we're at the final step here of our wet brine frozen egg curing process and basically once they've been strained off, I'm just going to bag them up in gallon Ziploc bags and put them in the freezer to store for a few months because uh, I'll be fishing these later this fall. So all I have to do is take them now. They still have a little liquid in them which is fine. It actually helps uh, preserve them in the freezer a little better so they don't burn. And I'll just stack a number of skeins into a gallon Ziploc. And we're just going to seal these up. I like to try and roll as much of the air out as I can. Get as much air out of here as we can. Simply by doing that. And you seal that up. And then I will put those in the freezer. Now if I'm going to store them for any length of time, say four to six months, I will take this frozen packet of eggs out and slip it, slip it into a vacuum bag and actually vacuum seal them so they'll last a lot longer. Four to six months maximum in a Ziploc freezer bag, they're not going to freezer burn. If you plan to store them for our, say six months to a year, you need to vacuum pack those in a vacuum pack bag. But make sure they're frozen solid first so when you vacuum pack them you don't crush them. Hey guys, just a couple things or a few thoughts uh, in closing. You know when you look at what it takes to make this wet brine and be successful in curing your frozen uh, eggs that you purchase, it can get kind of expensive because we're using a lot of product. But the end result is you produce very, very good eggs that fish really well. And to think about it, if you're able to find frozen roe that's uncured, you're going to pay anywhere from 7 to 10 bucks a pound. So your $100 investment on 10 pounds, you need to go the extra mile to make sure you cure them that they're going to fish well. And the other thing you can do is once you have this liquid brine uh, complete and you've done your first batch of eggs, you can then go back, keep it in your container, add back into it a half cup of salt, a half cup of sugar, a quarter cup of sodium sulfite, one half cup of Braxo fire, and about one ounce of your krill powder. In other words, put in those powdered ingredients once again because you have enough liquid and enough color to go ahead and do a second batch of eggs. So now you've sustained or extended the use of your brine for at least two batches of eggs. You're going to do anywhere from 5 to 15 upwards of 20 pounds of eggs with this one vat of brine. It's going to be upwards of about four bottles of fire brine, but you're going to get a lot of mileage out of it. Mm -hmm.